I'm so blessed and honored by this opportunity granted unto me by my prophet, my mother, uh, Prophet Agnes Simone Lavako. Hallelujah, Doctor Agnes Simone Lavako. We are so blessed. Okutu Sumba. Hallelujah. You know, Muruganda, you get a chigambo kusumba. It means a lot. In English, pastor, it looks like a, a normal word. But kusumbo muntu. Hallelujah. It is not something easy. Hallelujah. But we are so blessed and honored by our mother. And we are, we are grateful to God for what she's doing in her life uh, uh, to help us be better men and women. Hallelujah. And above all, to make it uh, to the finish line. Hallelujah. I want to bless God for my pastors, Pastor Robert and Pastor Helen. Hallelujah. We are so blessed by the words they share unto us. Hallelujah. We are grateful for their words of wisdom, words of inspiration, and words of healing. Hallelujah. I believe many times when we hear them speak, we never leave this building the same. Hallelujah. Even those who you are watching. Hallelujah. It is a blessing to have encountered them. Hallelujah. I believe it was not by accident. Hallelujah. But there is something they have added in our lives. Hallelujah. I want to bless God for our spiritual heritage. Bishop Paul Chquem. Hallelujah. And Prophetess Miriam Obina. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for your prayers. For, for everything that you do for us, hallelujah, and we give back the glory to God, hallelujah, and I want also to bless God once again for every minister, pastor, apostles in the house, hallelujah, we have uh, Pastor Ejula, we have uh, Evangelist David Ocheng, we have uh, uh, Pastor Zasio, we have uh, Evangelist Henry, Pastor Jet, hallelujah, Minister... Uh, 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 Oga Ben, hallelujah. Um, my wife Maureen, hallelujah. We bless God, hallelujah. And all, all the ministers of God in the house in your different capacities. We are definitely always blessed. We want to recognize the woman of God, Pastor Fiona. She's a minister, hallelujah. We bless God for you, hallelujah. We believe whatever has carried you from where you are. <laughs> it shall be well. Hallelujah. And above all, to the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We bless God so very much for the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. He, the, the, we cannot be anything without Him, definitely. Hallelujah. If it was not the Spirit of God, like what our mom often tells us, we will not be anywhere. But He, he has been there for us. Hallelujah. Let us humble ourselves and pray. Father, we are so blessed once again to come and be before you. It is not because that we are worthy enough or we have done something that many have not done. But it is your grace has, that has carried us from where we, wherever we have come from to come and hear your word, to come and minister unto us. Father, we come before you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ because it is the only name worthy to be spoken to be uttered before your presence but through that name we believe father that we shall partake of whatever you have prepared for us on this day whatever word we shall hear may it not return back void may it be a seed as we often say may it be a seed that shall bear fruit in our lives oh my father we shall not live the same we shall not live this building the same the way we came is not how we shall go out i believe we shall be inspired by your word we shall receive our healing by your word we shall be prospered by your word we shall become successful by your word father i pray that you come and use these lips of clay that father as increase i may decrease above all you shall take all your glory after all is done and i pray lord that you come come and sit among us may you come and release your throne amidst us to come and to judge to vindicate us to come and write a, be, a better covenant a better word for our lives father we pray that this day we shall hear you we shall see you in jesus mighty name we have prayed with thanksgiving amen and amen hallelujah let us have our wonderful seats you're welcome, our online viewers. 
you, you bless us so very much uh, when you share the videos, when you comment, the, the people in the diaspora, Momo, all the people that are out there that share our videos and encourage us to continue this work of God, which is not easy. Hallelujah. But it is all for the good. Hallelujah. And uh, if, you, if you are out there and you have never even bothered to come in our ministries, I pray you one, one time you come. Hallelujah. These days there are things we eat alone offline. Hallelujah. If you are used of waiting for us online, I am telling you there is sweetness these days that we are partaking of when we are offline. There is a time when mom leads prayer. You feel you're getting tired, but because of the sweetness of the prayer, you say, let me hang on till the end. So if you have been missing out, I pray that one, one time you come and be with us and pray and seek God, and I believe he shall do mighty and mighty things in our lives. Hallelujah. <laughs> these times are different hallelujah and we are men of a difference like mom often tells us that we are people of a difference so we are doing things differently these days so if you, you are left behind don't say ah, but please uh, I pray that you come and join us and, and pray with us. I believe you shall see the hand of God. Hallelujah. We are still in the month of redemption. Hallelujah. We are still in the month of redemption. Last week we had a theme entitled, Imitating the Life and the Works of Christ. Hallelujah. And it has not deviated so very much with the theme of this week where the theme of this week is entitled, The Lamb Shall Overcome Them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that because he overcame this word, we shall also overcome it. Hallelujah. So we are imitating the overcomer. And the fact that he overcame them, we shall also overcome them. Hallelujah. My theme is entitled, The Battle in the Spirit. Hallelujah. The battle in the spirit. Now, the theme of this week comes from Revelation chapter 17, verses 14. But I am going to read from verses 10, I believe. Revelation 17. What did our Lord overcome? Hallelujah. But when you read this scripture, what he overcame? was something that was not of this world. Hallelujah. It was something that was of a, of a spirit. It was a principality. Hallelujah. It was something that in our ordinary capacity as people, we will not have overcome it. But him who is the spirit above all, hallelujah, he had to overcome it. I believe as other preachers have been speaking and preaching about, uh, uh, about this theme and where they spoke about the called, the chosen, and the faithful. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that the day that you worship him in spirit, I believe those are the called, those are the chosen, and those are the faithful. If you walk contrary to what is required of us to walk in the spirit, other than to walk in the flesh, we cannot overcome, we cannot overcome with the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what every preacher has been speaking about. So the battle that the Lord was dealing with was the battle of the spirit. Hallelujah. Every time you feel a heavy burden upon your life, every time you feel that the pain has become too much, every time you feel it is heavy on you, it is a reminder that you're handling this thing in the flesh. Because if you handle it in the spirit, I believe you have one to carry the heavy load for your on, your on your behalf. Because he tells us that those that are heavy laden, bring all your burdens unto me. So if the battle becomes so heavy, you feel headache, you feel a lot of distress, 
you're dealing with the issue in the flesh. And when you deal with it in the flesh, you cannot overcome it. Because the Bible tells us as we are going to see, we do not wrestle against any other thing. We do not wrestle against the flesh, but against principalities. Hallelujah. Powers of the darkness, as we are going to see. So, the theme scripture comes from the uh, Revelation chapter 17, verses 14. But I am going to read, hallelujah, from verses 10. And the Bible says, and there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition. I'm reading from King James Version. And the ten horns, verses 12, which thou sowest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but to receive power. These kings that the lamb overcame, they had no power, but they were called kings. Hallelujah. The battle that we are against, the people that we are against, hallelujah, they have claimed themselves to be king. Hallelujah. They have assumed a certain kind of power that when they speak a word, we get scared. When they say, I am going to deal with you, you start to shake. When they say, I will, I, I, don't come across me, we get scared. Hallelujah. They have no power. But these kings, the Bible is telling us that they have no power. They have not even received the kingdom yet. But they have come, become principalities in our lives. They have become demons in our lives. They have no kingdom. But they have the courtesy to stand up and say, you shall not bake it. They have the, the audacity to say that there there is no grace. They have a no audacity to say that those ones are failures. But remember, they have no kingdom. They claim to be kings. Indeed, they might be kings. But they have no power over us. Hallelujah. But interestingly, the Bible tells us, but to receive power as kings, one hour with the beast. They can only assume power by having an hour with the beast. We have we have seen certain things uh, 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 burden our lives. Let's say poverty. But before poverty becomes poverty, there are certain demons that try to work with poverty to make us suffer. Debts arise. They have one hour with poverty and they say, let's bring debts unto him. Hallelujah. They have one hour with, with the people that, 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 that are against our prosperity. Maybe in your office, one that can be, uh, that rises against you and they want you to leave that office. But because there is a, a beast of poverty, it works with this individual who has not even power and they have power with the beast. The people that gather against us, they do not, there is one who always gathers them. And says, do you know what? I have good news for you. In the other area, there is nothing good. All they are doing is to give themselves power. But they have no power in them. Amen. They are assuming, they are trying to create a kingdom. But this kingdom is not yet to come. They claim to have the authority. But there is no authority. When you look at them, they have no future in them. But they have an audacity to claim they have a future to speak. Again, or to rise against us. Amen. But they have no power. All the power they assume, it is by gathering with one who is called the beast. Hallelujah. These have one mind. The lamb, the people that he overcame, they have one mind. Hallelujah. When poverty decides to strike you, it comes, it gathers itself with different things. And they have one mind to strike you down. When sickness comes into your life, sorry, when sickness comes into your life, hallelujah, it gathers other things. Hallelujah. It gathers, do you know that you can, you, because 
you have no money, you can even get sick. And, uh, and you die because you, the, the first source of the problem was because you didn't have money. It brought other things with it. Hallelujah. And then and, and they come with one mind to put you down. So the battle we are in is not an ordinary battle. It is a battle of the spirits. Hallelujah. All that we are suffering against. Hallelujah. It is not because a, a man with his power has decided to strike us down. They have gathered power somewhere from the beast. The beast has given them power to put us down. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us in verse 30, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Do you know what gives the beast the power? Hallelujah. Those that have, the, the, the poverty that has, uh, uh, that has decided to gather against us. Hallelujah. The sickness that has, the demon, the demon that we call sickness, the spirit that we call sickness is what gives the beast power. Hallelujah. The people that, that have gathered against us are the ones that are giving the, the, the beast the power to say I am dealing with them. They have nowhere to go. Because they have one mind. When a person decides to strike you down, you know they have come with one intention to strike you down. When something comes to put you down, you know it has decided and that's why it will gather everything in its capacity to put you down. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war. Hallelujah. With the lamb. They feel they have the capacity because of the power they have gathered. With one mind they have. Man preached about the Tower of Babel one time. The people had one mind. And they realize they can even build something that can go up to God. These were gathered together. They had one speech and one voice. And they gave power to the serpent to say, we shall be like God. We shall make a tower that shall go up to heaven. Hallelujah. And in literally, they made war against God to show that God, you are nothing. We have the power that you also can have. But the Bible tells us, this shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords. These demons, these kings, had decided to show themselves as kings. But they forget that is the one who is the king of kings. There are certain things in our lives that they have said we are kings in your life. They have taken over our bodies. They have taken over our minds. Indeed, they have become kings and queens in our lives. They have taken over our families. Hallelujah. They have taken over our generation. Something to set up a kingdom in you. It, had, it must have been there for some time. It, has, it might have struck you for some time. And it says, I am a king now in your life. I have made my storehouse in your life. I have made a heaven in your life. You have nowhere to go. Without me deciding to let you go, you have no life. You have nowhere to go. But the Bible tells us that the one who is above every other thing that can come in our lives and become a kingdom and set up a kingdom in our lives, there is one who has a greater kingdom. Hallelujah. He, this time did not come the way he came in the flesh. When he came in the earth, he came in the flesh. The Bible tells us that he that does not believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, he is an antichrist. He came in the flesh, but what he dealt with, he had to first transfigure himself into a spirit. And he died. And by his blood, his blood is not the blood that is flesh. His blood is the blood that is spirit. Hallelujah. For we overcome by only by that blood. And he says,
We are one with him and we are called and chosen and we have become one with Christ who is the lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us for he is Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called, chosen and faithful. Hallelujah. So this battle that we are after, this battle in our life, it is not a battle that we have to deal with with the tactics or the strategies of our mind or of our, or of our own way. But we have to deal with it in the spirit. Hallelujah. All the gatherings that we are having these days. Hallelujah. For us who are tired, we have tried our own strategies. Hallelujah. We have devised our own means. But at times our own means have failed us. We have devised our own weapons. But the weapons, these weapons are, are, are not the weapons that we have supposed to use. The weapons should be carnal. Not weapons that are devised by the mind of a flesh. But the mind led by the spirit. This is not about like what I saw with one man of God, the late, as he was in the midst of the service, the service and he said, I am now in the spirit. This is not how we shall deal with them. That I'm now in the spirit. There is a way we should be. Hallelujah. Beyond the, the, the going in the spirit. Hallelujah. But by being carried. By the one who can only usher us into the spirit. And that is the spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So this battle. Is not an ordinary battle. All that we are suffering. Did not, become, did not start just anyhow. It started somewhere in the spirit. Hallelujah. First John, when we read Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 15. Let's read Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 15. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 15. He says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith. Hallelujah, the faithful of the Lord. Into this grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope hallelujah and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed up Lord in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us hallelujah for when we are yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly hallelujah Christ died for us the ungodly and he gave us a weapon Hallelujah. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet per adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. By God, but God commandeth his love towards us. In that, while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Hallelujah. For if when we are enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Hallelujah. We were reconciled through death. He came in, to, in, in flesh. But he had to die. For him to walk us in the spirit. For, 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 to, for, for us to reconcile us with God. He had to first die. To take up the, the, the form of the spirit. For us to win this battle. For us to overcome with the Lamb. We have to make the flesh die. He had to make the flesh die. And then after he made the flesh die, the Bible is telling us that's when he reconciled us with God by the death of his life. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his, by his life. We, have to, we, we overcame by him first taking off the form of the spirit. For us to overcome this battle, with the lamb, we have to make the flesh die. We have to die with Christ. 
For if when we are sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of him, we overcame the sin, we overcame this one by him first taking off the form of the spirit, the form he first let the, the flesh die. For if when we, uh, verses 11 says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Hallelujah. Even over them that had not sin after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. Had to... What? The Bible is telling us in verses 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. Sin, to, they did not in any way overcome sin. It was all over them, even those that did not sin. Sin overcame them. It is an interesting story. Verse. That even over them that had not sinned, so, the, the, the Adam in the flesh, Christ, God had to come, uh, uh, Papa in the doctrine, uh, doctrine class always explains this thing. The first Adam and the second Adam. The second Adam, if I remember, if I'm, uh, I'm correct, Papa will correct me. The second Adam is our Lord Jesus Christ. So, the first Adam had to first die. That Whatever was overcoming men of those days. We are so glad to be born in such a generation. Hallelujah. That the first Adam had to cease. The, the sin that he did that even those that had not sinned. The Bible has told us in Revelation that these kings had no power. But unfortunately, we, even without their power, they overcame certain people. Hallelujah. We, we literally say that even here, before the second time comes into place, even those that had no sin, there were things, uh, there are things that were, sin had taken charge of them. I can use that would be the best explanation. That there are certain things that had become king. Sin had become king. Sin had power. That it even had to take over those that had not sinned. Hallelujah. But because the one, the second, comes into play. He comes in the form of the, but he dies to reconcile everyone. The sinners and the, the ungodly and the godly. And he made us overcomers. Hallelujah. This, this was a battle. The battle against the sin. Sin that had become king over this world. That it gave power to the beast. To say that I have taken over this world. Hallelujah. Until it was dealt with by the death of Christ. That then sin was overcome. That then that what that had gotten power of man over woman. That it had to be overcome. Hallelujah. When we read First John chapter 4, First John chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. First John chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. Hallelujah. So these things that are against us, the Bible is trying to remind us that they have no power. They are trying to gather about or why people bring others to join them to either the campaign you or come against your life is because they want to they want to gain that power they want to be seen as if they they have the power they want to gather many to give them to give them strength i can say but one man to come against you hallelujah they want to show that they have they have power they gather many to give them power but the Bible is telling us that this had no power. But the one who is the king and the king of kings comes and deal with them. First John chapter 4 verses 2 
chapter 3. It says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Hallelujah. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Wherefore, ye have we heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Hallelujah. The lamb had to has had was in the flesh, but to overcome this battle, he had to die. There is a way, I, 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 as I was uh, comparing this, some, I somehow I felt I understood it, but I felt it's so hard for me to break it down. Hallelujah! Not to confuse to confuse uh, people and to confuse me. Hallelujah! But. The Bible is telling us that Christ came in the flesh. Christ was in the flesh. But in Revelation 17, the theme scripture tells us that the lamb that was, the, that was slain was the one that was able to deal with every power, every king, every beast that had come to overcome us. Amen. The writer was so specific that he says the lamb that was slain who the lamb was, who is our Lord Jesus? He, he had to first die and be sacrificed and take on, the, take on the form of the spirit to deal with whatever has become a king over us, whatever principality that has come over, whatever tongue that has become a principality over us, whatever word that has become a principality over us. He had to become a, a lamb. He had to, to take on the form of the, the form of the spirit to deal with it. Otherwise, if he had not died, these kings would still be dealing with it. Because the Bible has told us that even those that had not sinned, it had to deal with them. I, I don't know. It, it was it felt so heavy on me to, to get this, or to put it down. I felt to even write anything. But it is so interesting that the revelations talks of the lamb that overcomes them. I, I'm trying not to deny the power in the name of Jesus. But he said, the lamb that was slain, even Revelation 5, five uh, verses 12 says, that they looked around to find who was worthy to hold the scroll. Hallelujah. But the one who took on the form of the spirit and died for our sake, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, I believe when you talk of the lamb that was slain, even if you don't, you don't say Jesus, the demonic world shakes because they know there is only one lamb that was slain. They understand it immediately because he was the only, he, he had to take off the form of the spirit to be worthy to hold the scroll. When he was in the flesh, because the Bible is telling, he came in the flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ was in the flesh. At that time, he was not yet ordained to be worthy to hold the scroll. To give us that power. To give us those riches. To give us that honor, those blessings, and that wisdom in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the battle we are against is not an ordinary battle. But it is a battle that is beyond our capacity literally. Hallelujah. For you to be called, it is beyond your capacity. You cannot call yourself. Hallelujah. You cannot say that I am called. For you to be chosen, you, know, you cannot choose yourself. No, you cannot say now, I am here, I am chosen. Whether you want it, I am the one supposed to be here or to stand here or to be the king, whatever. And then the faithful one. To be faith, you cannot have faith when you deal, you're still holding on to your flesh. The flesh cannot, operating, you cannot easily have faith if you don't, you don't have the spirit of God upon you. Because the things that require faith, the ordinary eyes cannot easily interpret them. So, this battle, we have to take away every burden from us and know that the one who overcame 
everything is the one to deal with it you can pray over 30 minutes or a, a day or an hour but until you are under the unction of the spirit of God that prayer is nothing there is a time I came here to minister I stood on the altar as usual so that time I felt the th I don't even remember the theme it was so heavy on me so I had to first lay the, someone had already been assigned to pray as usual Apostle Isaac opens the prayer but I felt for also for me to lay the ground properly for me I should engage in prayer. I remember that day, I have never prayed. I don't usually pray a long prayer when I'm starting prayer. I, I always want the Spirit of God to carry me and take charge. Because the ground is already laid. Hallelujah. So, that day I prayed a, 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 like five or six minutes prayer. And I felt I had prayed. <laughs> I sat on the chair. As people were clapping. Man of God, you have come from serving God. I had a spirit come from you. Who told you to pray that such a wrong prayer at the altar? I was, I was even gathering myself to say, thank you, Lord, for the ministration. I had a small voice pinching me. Who gave you the audacity to pray in such long? Hallelujah. Now, you see, there are certain things that come into your mind. You wonder, am I speaking to myself? But I felt I had done it. I had prayed. But the Spirit of God was not in that prayer. That thing, every time I think about it, it disturbs me. And that reminds me, this battle is not about us. We cannot handle it in our own capacity. We cannot deal with this shame in our own capacity. Hallelujah. We cannot deal with whatever failed our ancestors and our, our forefathers in our own capacity. Our own prayers until they are... Because the Bible tells us in, in Romans chapter 8 verses 26 that the spirit of the Lord is the one who, that gives us the words to pray. Until he gives you the word to pray. This battle you cannot win it. So that's why I started by reminding everyone out there. That you need to come and join us. Hallelujah. Don't carry the burden on yourself. Hallelujah. There is a, a me, uh, those days. I used to be disturbed so very much that if you looked at me at times, you could know that this person is going through something. Hallelujah. But nowadays, you cannot even tell that this person has trouble in his house. Hallelujah. Until my mother told me that this Lord is not for you to carry. That I had to... to that I, I think... Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us we saw imitating the life of, of, of Christ last week. That Christ, for him to say, receive your miracle, he had to first see the Father say, This one has received their miracle. He did not come in his flesh and say, since now I have the power, receive your miracle. He had to first see the father. The father was not physically there. The father did not come physically. The body of God did not come physically there and say, oh no, oh no. He had to first enter into the realm of this and see what the father did. And then he also did the same. Hallelujah. I never wanted to share this testimony. It was a testimony. Last month, I had a weird dream. Not a weird dream. But in that dream, there was a test that had, was done. But after the test, people were gathered. Hallelujah. And they said, Brian, you have passed the test. But the test that 
was the exam, the answer that was that, 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 that for that test, the word that was uh, the word that was the answer was the word kasese. I have, I have not, I didn't bother about what kasese means, but the answer for the test was kasese. Everyone wondered how of all the things you have learned, how did the kasese come into your mind? I have not even understood what Kasese meant in that dream. But afterwards, they gather everyone and they release a garment on me. They dressed me up. As it was like a, a cross of the, those Gandura Nigerian clothes. And they dressed me up as a graduation guy, gown. Hallelujah. What I immediately did, I, I woke up in the, pray, uh, in the night and I was like, God showed me. A good a, a sign of goodwill for this dream. I remember the words of my mother, Prophet Zagnes. Hallelujah. Make, make me see a sign of good for this dream. I do not want to see the end of this all. I do not want to see how big it shall become. But just show me. I only requested for three signs. The next day I come to church. In the morning, as we have had gathered from our prayers the first gift I received it was from a man of God in this place uh, this trouser that you see me now it was a gift that I received <laughs> hallelujah uh, I used to have my kakurim kawale that I come and minister in on Thursday hallelujah that was the first sign the second sign the next I think it was after the day or the next day. I received another gift from another a man of God in this place. Hallelujah. Of a trouser. This, I, I, I tried to, I, I refused to even tell my wife the dream. I said, this dream, you know the devil is always waiting in the corners to hear the words that we release. Hallelujah. That day I woke up and I see where this ends. Hallelujah. Then it, uh, some, past, some weeks pass, and then a few days ago, the ultimate sign of it all, I receive another gift from the, the oracle of it all. Hallelujah. Of a, a packet of vests in different colors. And I was like, that's when I, I, I told my dad, you see, uh, the dream I had was like and this. This, these are, I, I said, God, just show me a sign. I do not know want to see where this ends, but the sign of it all, just to confirm it. Hallelujah. So, this was, this began as a dream in the spirit. Hallelujah. You cannot see this, you cannot have these things in the flesh. I do not want to know the details where this ends. <laughs> but only I needed a sign to see where, where this thing, what is it about. Hallelujah. But it all began in, in a dream kind of form. Which things you cannot physically say. This battle is not ours, child of God. Hallelujah. The one that died and reconciled us with God is the one to handle these things. This is why we come every day to pray. Because we want the author of it all to deal with it. Hallelujah. The one who overcame all of it to come and deal with it. Hallelujah. Let's read Luke chapter 1. Uh, verses 31 to 33. Luke chapter 1. Uh, verses 31 to 33. The Bible says. Luke chapter 1. Verses 31 to 33. Now, here is an interesting story. My theme is entitled, The Battle in the Spirit. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. 
Hallelujah. This was the name given unto him, the name of this word, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Now, you see these names are names of the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. His name shall be Jesus. His throne shall be called the throne of David. Hallelujah. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Now, Papa preached about the mystery behind Jacob and Israel. When I read this statement, that, that's when I realized that this message, I'm not yet far off track. Hallelujah. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Now, Christ Jesus Christ, the one born in the flesh, he reigns over us who are in the flesh. Who is called Brian? Who is called uh, Pastor Jacob? Hallelujah. He helps us overcome this world that we are in. But we have to be careful and remind ourselves that as we are trying to overcome this world, hallelujah, we have to overcome it in the flesh. He says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Hallelujah. And his kingdom, there shall, for, for us to have the kingdom, forever, to reign forever. Hallelujah. We have to, to allow the one that overcame all, that overcame this world and died and became the spirit for us to have both the kingdom here and also the kingdom in heaven. Now, he gives us the kingdom. Jesus Christ helps us build the kingdom here on earth. Hallelujah. But the lamb that was slain helps us also have our own kingdom. Hallelujah. In the heavenly Blesses because the Bible tells us that we rule with Him in the heavenly place. That means we also, as we set up our kingdoms on this earth, we can only rule these kingdoms through this Jesus Christ who overcame this world. But we can only also have reign over the heavenly places by allowing ourselves to be carried by the one who was transfigured from the flesh into the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Jacob can only rule in this world by Jesus Christ. But Israel can have a kingdom in the heavenly places only by the lamb that was slain. Amen. Hallelujah. I, was, I built this based on what Papa Plit some time ago about Jacob and Israel. Hallelujah. Jacob is of a flesh, but Israel is of another dimension. Israel was born out of the spirit. He had to battle with God in the spirit. And then Israel was born forth. This is what my, my papa told, told us. These are not my words. I'm, I'm learning from the elders. Hallelujah. Jacob can only overcome this world by Jesus Christ. But can rule in the heavenly places by the lamb that was through his blood. If there is no blood that was shed, we cannot load the heavenly places. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, this sermon became a, a, a real, it became so beyond my capacity. I was like, the grace upon Pastor Robert helped me interpret these things. Hallelujah. But, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jacob, for you to be called, for you to walk with the Lamb, to be called, those that are called are not the, the ones in the flesh. For Israel, so Jacob to be called to become Israel, he had to battle out the flesh. Hallelujah. For you to be chosen, you cannot be chosen until the flesh still takes charge of your life. Hallelujah. And faith is not for the ordinary. To say that this one has walked a walk of faith, it is not for the ordinary. That that pulls you from wherever you come from, it is not of the flesh. That says wherever you are, 
hundreds of kilometers or whatever kilometers you come from and says come and gather it is not of the flesh Amen. hallelujah Amen. because the battle is in the spirit mama and all our pastors pastor Helen, pastor often tells us if you cannot over you cannot have it on this earth If you still dream going back to the village until you win that dream and you feel in the in, 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 after the dream you something strikes and you the battle is not yet won until you st you still dream that eating in the dream the battle is not yet over until you, 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 you claim that ladder that you dream uh, 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 and be, 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 before you fall down and you see your, yourself now climb it and touch the top of it the battle is not yet won you have not Christ and a quick mama quit a quick mira murugan or two for quick mira or quiver gala hallelujah ngamoyo wamu kama dana quick gavira muchro techo no will rambo wangu de is not yet your one. Until you give that seed of faith and you feel it has pained you inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the flesh cannot release that seed until you're sure that my, if I put this on this altar, I'm going to become something. You cannot Hallelujah. There is a time I remember I came in service. I had nothing, no coin on me. All days, around 2019, I think. I come into service and the anointing was so heavy. Hallelujah. But I had nothing on me to give. But I remember that time I had just gotten a job and my boss somehow loved me and gave me a gift of a phone. So it was, I had, that's the only phone that uh, in the house that we had. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the first weeks, the guy loved me and he gave me a gift of a phone. But in the mid, that very week, we come into service and the anointing was serving. I felt inside me, I should give something. So what I did, I just came and I said, God, let me release this phone. I removed my lines. And I put, the, I brought the phone and put it on the altar. I did not know what I was doing. So the next morning, as I was heading to work, I was in a coaster. My window was open, and the person sitting in front of me also his window was open. As we were, we had reached uh, Ginger Lord on, on those vital in the early morning. It was around 6:30 there. It was still a bit dark, not so dark. A muyae comes, the guy had a, a new, uh, it was an iPhone, a good looking phone, and pulls it from the window. And I heard the voice tell him, if you had not released that phone, yours would have gone. Because I also like to, when I'm in the taxi, I'm, WhatsApp, I'm on internet, and I like, if you had not released it, you, and that one would have pained me so very much. Because if I lost, if I had, uh, I had meet, uh, the spirit tell me give it out and I lose it in such, in such a way, up to now I'll be still bitter. I will be like, I missed something. And the, the, the next week, my in-law had gone for a trip and brings us a new Samsung. It was S5 something. A new Samsung brand phone. And I was like, yeah. Hallelujah. But you cannot easily do something like that if the flesh is still taking charge. You cannot go to war with God. The Bible tells us, this is the verse that mom often uses, hallelujah, that we are the battle axe of the Lord. You cannot be the battle axe of the Lord until you see yourself being an axe in the spirit. Now we menya. Hallelujah. 
He tells us that you are my battle battle axe. But when do you when you look at me, do you do I look like an axe? But he's telling me, you are my battle axe. How do you tell me that I am an axe? That can only be revealed by one who walks in the spirit, not in the flesh. Hallelujah. First Peter 2, 11. First Peter 2, verses 11. Ah, time is running. First Peter 2, chapter 11. It says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, obtain from fleshly, fleshly lust which war against the soul. Hallelujah. <laughs> this battle that Christ overcame that we are reading in the Revelation 17, 10 to 14 was a war against the soul. And this war that was against our souls Hallelujah. We cannot win it if we still walk in fleshly lusts. If you feel comfortable that you cannot leave your bed to come and seek God, your soul is not yet won. You are born again, but your soul is still in battle. It has not yet been won over. Hallelujah. Until you, you, you don't see yourself to, to abstain from certain things, Hallelujah. Your soul is still at battle. And the, the, the overcome of it all has not yet seen it worthy to win this soul, that, that soul. Because it is still operating in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 11 to 24. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 to 24. This is the scripture that we have had being read this season. We are still in the week of redemption. Hallelujah. You can see, if you want to, the, the Bible tells us that test the spirits. Hallelujah. If you wanted to test that we are still on the right track, check the theme of the month and the sub-themes of this week. I believe somehow, at times we even forget, but somehow all this battle is about our redemption. Our redemption, the redeemed of the Lord are not the ones that are still operating in the flesh, but the redeemed of the world of the Lord are the ones that are born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 11 to 24. The Bible says, But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and a more perfect tabernacle, net not made with hand, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of gods and cows, but by his own blood, he entered in one into the holy place, having obtained internal redemption for life. He retained internal redemption for life. He made us overcome. He redeemed us. Hallelujah. Not by the blood of God's son, but by his own blood. Amen. He had to make the flesh die. And by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. We have access to the holy place. Hallelujah. By his own blood. Having obtained internal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats. Hallelujah. And the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the internal spirit Offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living. We have for last to purge ourselves from dead works to serve the living God. Hallelujah. 
Do you know what we have to do? We have to make the flesh die. And for this cause, for last, for our conscience to be purged from dead works, in other words, to sum it all, to be called, to be chosen, if you're called, you're chosen, you're faithful, there are no dead works in your life. You've already overcome that. For you to have no dead works, that whatever you place your hand on, you see the hand of God manifest. Hallelujah. We have to operate in the spirit. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Now, if, uh, before the month of April, I, I, I'm usually... <laughs> I fell in love with the interpretation of uh, Papa when it comes to numbers. So towards Epa, I always saw number 43 everywhere I, I went. Hallelujah. I could encounter it so very many times. Hallelujah. I wondered why number 43? I said, let me search biblically what it means. Of course, there is number 4, which is the month of April, but number 43 when I just searched around, and you can see we are in 2023, I want to open our eyes. 2023, when you get 20 and add 23, it gives us 43. Now, the people that interpret number 43, they tell us that number 43 is about contention. Hallelujah. And contention between the old covenant and the new covenant. The person where I got a search from, the person writes that for God to make a new covenant with Abraham, then the, the name Abraham to reach at that time when God made a new covenant with Abraham in Genesis, I've forgotten the, the verse. I, the name Abraham is, is given, is mentioned 43 times. But let's not contend so much about that. But the, 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 40, the 43rd book in the Bible, hallelujah, is the book of the Gospel of John. Now the Gospel of John is about the life of Christ. Something which I saw, I, 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 I used to take, carry my phone to, to read for you <laughs> the word of God. As I, I, I have several, but I said, since I saw something to do with contention. But when you read what this book talks about, and what I'm trying to show you is that this month, the themes you see, if you want to test the spirit, see what these, these themes are. You will know that those that say mama is ruminate and whatever that is, she's not annoyed, you will say that they, they are mad. Hallelujah. Now, the 43rd book of the, of the word of God, which is John, the gospel of John, when I read it, it says, the gospel of John, more than any other gospel, this is what King James summarizes, stresses the deity of Christ and provides us with the interpretation of his life. Hallelujah. He is, uh, this, is, this is written on top of the, what King James writes. So you can see that these themes are more about Christ. Who is the mediator of the new covenant? We are, the, the, these times that we are in, we are, we, we, we are, there is a, we are being taken away from that old covenant that we are in. And we are being unknowingly, being ushered and walking into the new covenant. The covenant that was that, that, that the covenant that was done that was done by the shedding of the blood of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So number 43 is uh, it is about contention. The old covenant says you are not yet there, but the new covenant says we have to make a new covenant. But the life of Christ is all about the new covenant. I, I hope that Papa, I'm right. Isn't it the new covenant? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? So, 
The Lord is redeeming our souls in this season. Hallelujah. Whatever has been battling for our souls, Christ has contended with it. Whatever has been denying us a chance. You know when I read that, I was like, Mama, Mama is at a different level. I was like, for sure, like oh, David Ocheng says, for sure, there is the spirit of God in this place. We walk in these things and knowing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, the lamb has surely overcome our souls. Believe me, you, this year we shall not end the same. You shall have a mark, of, a sign of good. When this verse has been, has been running through my head this whole day. Sure. This theme I was telling God, let this theme only be this, that sign of goodwill for my life. Hallelujah. For you have contended to save my soul. Hallelujah. For surely we have been redeemed. I have just given you because of time, but you can search. These themes, for sure, Christ, we have, Christ has, has, over, has made a, our souls have been overcome. Hallelujah. I had a lot to share, but because of time, I'm out of time. It shall be for next time. Shalom and shalom. May God bless you. May God keep you. Hallelujah. And uh, for our online viewers, hallelujah. Uh, greetings from Miami Ministries and above all from the Oracle, from our prophet, from the lioness. She's, she's always praying for you. If you want to test it, you know people like to test. Come and see. Hallelujah. But I believe it, it is all for the good in such a season. Shalom and shalom. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God expand you and elevate you in Jesus' mighty name. Once again, celebrate the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. No wonder Psalms 24 7 says, Our soul have escaped. The snare has been broken, and our souls have escaped. Hallelujah. In this season, don't be shocked for a certain escape, a certain breakthrough somewhere that you don't expect. Hallelujah. One thing I've discovered, it comes to those that abide in the presence. That is why in this season, do not, never try to miss out on the things concerning the presence of God. Very important. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm told tomorrow is a public holiday. To those that are spiritual, let me just speak the proverb and end it there. Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings from my mother, Prophetess Emmanuel Agnes. And guess what? Tomorrow is an overnight. It's today. We're already in Friday. It's an overnight. Hallelujah. When, when you see certain things go taking place, don't just let them pass you by. This week, God has told us the Lamb is waging war. And they that are with him are going to make sure that not, he's going to make sure that they overcome the cold, the chosen, and the faithful. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, make sure that you are connected. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, be connected. Be connected. Today, I'm just speaking Proverbs. Amen. To you that has ears, listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. In Jesus' mighty name. We end here at this point as we prepare for the overnight tomorrow or today. In Jesus' mighty name. So, uh, you that is around, wherever you are, come and let us seek God. Especially in times like this. Our help is only in the presence of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us once again celebrate the online church. <laughs> Glory be to God. As everyone is lifted up, our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever in Jesus' mighty name and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord with my wife and children and great grandchildren forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. A blessed night. Catch you once again in the overnight in Jesus' mighty name. Shalom and a very wonderful night. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yeah, so we can rest. Don't forget, four, we're already on the prayer altar here. So take this time.